a feast of a weeks, a harvest, or at the feast of Pentecost. Yes, sir. All right. So we're going to rejoice before the Lord today. Before we rejoice before the Lord today, we got to get this spiritual food. Amen. So we got to understand what this day is all about first. Right? So we're going to give you, we're going to start off with a definition of Pentecost. Because, you know, a lot of people say they're Pentecostal, but they don't understand what Pentecost means. So we're going to, for those who don't understand what Pentecost means, we're going to give you the definition first. All right. This is Zion Defense Compact Bible Dictionary, page 446. Pentecost. The word derives from the Greek for the 50th day. See, and so that's what Pentecost means. It means the 50th day. Uh-huh. It was the Jewish Feast of Weeks. The Jewish Feast of Weeks. That's what this, what this uh, um, uh, day is really called. The Feast of Weeks and what else? It says, verily, it says variously called the Feast of Harvest. The, and the call, it is called the Feast of Harvest. But everybody recognizes this day as being called the Feast of Pentecost. But Pentecost simply means 50. And we're going to show you why it's called the Feast of Weeks and the Feast of Harvest. So first, let's go to Leviticus, the 23rd chapter. Leviticus 23. And we're going to pick it up in verse 1. Leviticus 23 and 1. Everybody got it? Amen. Go ahead and read Leviticus, the 23rd chapter, verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak That's all we need right there. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, because Moses didn't come up with this on his own. The Lord is the one who gave this to Moses to give to the people. Skip to verse 4. Skip to verse 4. Go ahead. Verse 4. Uh-huh. These are the feasts of the Lord, even holy convocation. Uh-huh which ye shall proclaim in their season. See, so this comes annually. This feast here comes annually. In fact, the Lord's feast comes annually. And this feast right here as well comes annually. These are the feasts of the Lord, even holy convocations, which you shall proclaim in their season. Go ahead and read. In the 14th day of the first month at even is the Lord's Passover. Uh -huh. And on the 15th day of the same month, it's the Feast of Unleavened Bread unto the Lord. Uh -huh. Seven days ye must eat unleavened bread. Now, so after the Passover comes the Feast of Unleavened Bread, then comes the Feast of Pentecost, or the Feast of Weeks. Skip to verse 14. Skip to verse 14. Go oh, ahead. Yeah. 14. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, verse 9. Verse 9. Yes. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, uh -huh. Speaking to the children of Israel, and say unto them, When ye be come into the land which I give unto you, and shall reap the harvest thereof, uh -huh. then ye shall bring a sheaf of the first fruits of your harvest unto the priest. Now, so he said, You shall bring a sheaf to the priest, <clears throat> because the people could not harvest the land until this was done, until a sheaf was brought before the Lord and weighed before him. So a sheaf is a bundle of wheat. Yes, sir. <clears throat> that the priest had to wave before the Lord to be accepted. But go ahead and read. And he shall wave the sheep before the Lord uh -huh. to be accepted for you on the morrow after the Sabbath. Uh -huh. wait, wait a minute. Now, what's the morrow after the Sabbath? That is the first day of the week. And so that's the day that this was supposed to be waved before the Lord. The morrow after the Sabbath. That which is the first day of the week. Go ahead. On the morrow after the Sabbath, the priest shall wave it. Uh -huh. And ye shall offer that day when ye wave the sheep and he lamb uh -huh. without blemish mm -hmm. of the first year for a burnt offering unto the Lord. So now, so you had to offer up this lamb. Uh, 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 he said, and ye shall offer that day when ye wave the sheep and he lamb without blemish of the first year for a burnt offering. So this lamb had to be a, a male without blemish of the first year. Right? Now, so this sheep, I'm going to just tell you now, this sheep and this lamb represent Jesus. Okay. Now, skip to verse uh, skip to verse 14. Go ahead. And you shall eat neither bread, nor parched corn, uh -huh. nor green ears, 
until the self same day that ye have brought an offering unto your God. Uh -huh. It shall be a statue forever throughout your generation uh -huh. and all your dwelling. Go ahead. And ye shall count unto you from the morrow after the Sabbath, from the day that ye brought the sheep of the wave offering, uh -huh. seven Sabbaths shall be complete. So he said now, cause, so this is the only feast that it doesn't fall on the same day every year. This is the only feast because the sheep had to be waved, so you don't know what day the sheep is going to be waved on. Okay, but and then you couldn't start your count until you waved the sheep first. But it had to be waved on the first day of the week. On the first day of the week, which we call Sunday today. Read that verse 15 again. 15. Uh-huh. And ye shall come unto you from the morrow after the Sabbath, uh -huh. from the day that ye brought the sheep of the wave offering, uh -huh. seven Sabbaths shall be complete. Seven Sabbaths shall be complete. That is seven weeks, and that is 49 days. Right? Go ahead and read. Even until the morrow after the seventh Sabbath, uh -huh. shall ye number 50 days. Uh-huh. And ye shall offer a new meat offering unto the Lord. So the feast of Pentecost always lands on the first day of the week, of which, with which we call Sunday. It always lands on the first day of the week. Now skip to verse 21. Skip to verse 21. Go ahead. And ye shall proclaim on the self same day uh -huh. that it may be in a holy convocation unto you. Uh -huh. Ye shall do no servile work therein. Go ahead. It shall be a statue forever in all your dwellings uh -huh. throughout your generation. Now look, he just said, he just told you this is a, a, a statue forever throughout your generation. You should have a holy convocation. Now what are you going to do with that? I mean, you know, you got people keep saying that these feast of days are done away. What does he mean? It's, it's a statue forever. What does that mean? It is a law forever. That's what this means. Now, and he said, and then he did, he solidified. He said, in all your dwellings throughout your generation, where the children of Israel are, you're supposed to be doing this. Let's go now. Because you know you got a lot, some people, some of my Israelite brothers say, well, we're not in the land, so we don't have to do this no more. He said, uh, this is a statue forever in all your dwellings throughout your generation. And we are a generation, and that's why we're still keeping this day of Pentecost. That's right, brother. Yes, sir. Let's go to Deuteronomy 16. Deuteronomy, the 16th chapter. Deuteronomy 16, and we're going to pick it up in verse 9. Deuteronomy 16 and 9. <clears throat> Deuteronomy 16 and 9. And this is why he called it the Feast of Weeks. Go ahead and read. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It says, uh, this is Deuteronomy chapter 16, verse 9. Mm -hmm. Seven weeks shall thou number unto thee. Uh-huh. So he's telling you the same thing we just read over in uh, 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 Leviticus 23rd chapter. He said, number to you seven Sabbaths. So now he's telling you right here, seven weeks shall thou number unto you. Same day. Still 49 days plus one day would be, would be 50 days. Go ahead and read. Begin to number the seven weeks uh -huh. from such time as thou beginneth to put the sickle to the corn. Uh -huh. And thou shalt keep the feast of weeks until the Lord thy God with a tribute of a free will offering of thine hand. Uh-huh. Which thou shalt give unto the Lord thy God, according as the Lord thy God hath blessed thee. Uh, as according to the Lord thy God hath blessed thee, because the Lord is going to bless you. And yes, you sir. are to give when he bless you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Go ahead and read. And thou shalt rejoice before the Lord thy God, thou and thy son and mm -hmm. thy daughter, uh -huh. and thy manservant and thy maidservant, uh -huh. and the Levite that is within thy gates, and the stranger. Uh, oh, look at that. So everybody was supposed to come and keep this feast, not only of the children of Israel, but the stranger was supposed to come to keep this feast. Yes, if he wanted to be a part of the household of God. Bring that out, brother. Go ahead and read. Yes, sir. And the fatherless uh -huh. and the widow that are among you in the place which the Lord thy God hath chosen to place his name there. Uh -huh. And thou shalt remember that thou was a bondman in Egypt, 
and thou shalt observe and do these statutes. Now, let's go now. Let's go to Exodus the 34th chapter. Exodus 34th chapter, because the Lord's gonna tell them right here all that all the women that open up the matrix, uh, the firstborn that comes out of this woman, and that's the Lord's. <clears throat> of the male, of the beast. Of all the animals, the firstborn is the Lord's, including men. We had Exodus 34 and 19. Exodus 34 and 19. Go ahead and read it. Yes, sir. Exodus chapter 34, verse 19. Uh-huh. All that open up the matrix is mine. Uh-huh. And every firstling among the cattle, whether ox or sheep, uh -huh. that is male. Go ahead. But the firstling of an ass, thou shalt redeem with a lamb. He said that ass, you're going to redeem him with a lamb. Why? Because the ass is an unclean animal. So you should redeem him with a lamb. Go ahead and read. And if thou redeem him not, uh -huh. then shalt thou break his neck. Go ahead. All the firstborn of thy sons thou shalt redeem. Uh huh. And none shall appear before me. Empty. All the firstborn of thy sons shall be redeemed. Now keep this in mind. Go ahead and read. What verse you at? 21. Uh huh. Six days thou shalt work. On the seventh day thou shalt rest. Mm -hmm. In earing time and in harvest thou shalt rest. Go ahead. And thou shalt observe the feast of weeks of the first fruits of wheat harvest. Stop right there. And thou shalt observe the feast of weeks of the first fruits of what? Wheat harvest. Because that's the uh, fruit that we are dealing with right here is the wheat harvest. And I'm going to show you the spiritual significance of this a little later on. He said, and thou shalt observe the feast of weeks of the first fruits of wheat harvest. Uh huh. And the feast of ingathering at the year's end. Now that is the feast of tabernacles, the feast of ingathering. Verse 23, what does it say? Thrice in the year shall all your men children appear before the Lord God, uh -huh. the God of Israel. Now, so he said, three times in the year shall all your males appear before the God of Israel, right? Let's go now. Let's go to uh let's go to Luke the second chapter because Jesus was a male of the firstborn. Just like he told you this lamb had to be a male of the firstborn without blemish. Luke 2, Luke 2 and 6. Luke 2 and 6. Luke 2 and 6. Go ahead and read it. Luke chapter 2, verse 6. And so it was that while they were there, uh -huh. the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought Talk forth. Talk about Mary. So she should be delivered. Go ahead and read. Verse 7. Uh -huh. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes. Now, she brought forth her firstborn son, just like that lamb had to be uh, the firstborn, right? Without blemish. So Mary brought forth her firstborn son. Go ahead and read. And wrapped him in swaddling clothes uh -huh. and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Uh -huh. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, uh -huh. keeping watch over their flock by night. Now, so we got Jesus now. He was born and he is the first male born, right? Without blemish. I'm going to throw this, over, throw this in here. Let's go to 1 Peter, the first chapter. Because Jesus was without sin. And that's what it means when it says without blemish as it pertains to Jesus. So we had 1 Peter, the first chapter and verse 19. 1 Peter 1 and 19. Will you get it, brother? Go ahead and read. Yes, sir. 1 mm -hmm. Peter, chapter 1, verse 19. Uh-huh. But with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb, without blemish. Oh, Christ was, I'll tell you what, go back to verse 18. Go back to verse 18. Go ahead. 18. Uh-huh. For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things. Uh-huh. Just like that lamb had to be redeemed, you have to be redeemed. Yes, and let's see what you have to be redeemed with. Go ahead and read. 
with corruptible things as silver and gold uh -huh. from your vain conversations received by tradition from your fathers. Uh -huh. But with the precious blood of Christ. Oh, this is what you were redeemed with? The precious blood of Christ. Uh -huh. As of a lamb without blemish and without spot. As of a lamb without blemish and without spot. Just like that lamb had to be a male of the firstborn without blemish. And Jesus was a male of the firstborn without blemish. Does everybody get that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let's go now. Let's go to John, the 10th chapter, John 10. John, the 10th chapter, and we're going to pick it up at verse 10. John 10 and 10. Because this is what Jesus came to give us all. Everybody who wants to get salvation can get it. Uh, uh, John 10, and we're going to pick it up at verse 10. Go ahead and read. <clears throat> John chapter 10, verse 10. Uh -huh. The thief cometh not, but for to steal, and to kill, uh -huh. and to destroy. I am come that they might have life, uh -huh. and it that they might have it more abundantly. Now, you know, most people, most preachers will tell you that, you know, you're supposed to have a lot of wealth and everything and uh, 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 material things. And they use this scripture right here to say this. But that's not what this is talking about. It's not talking about wealth and material things. Skip down to verse 14. Skip down to verse 14. Go ahead and read it. 14. Uh-huh. I am the good shepherd. Uh-huh. And know my sheep. And am known of mine. Go ahead. As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father. Uh -huh. And I lay down my life for the sheep. Because that's what the shepherd does. He lays down his life for the sheep. You know, they didn't just come and get Jesus. Jesus gave up his life for the sheep. That's right. He laid down his life for the sheep. Go ahead, uh, uh, skip down to verse uh, Skip to verse 27. Let's show you what he came to give you. So he said he gave you came to give life more abundantly. Well, let's see this life more abundantly. Verse 27. Go ahead and read it. My sheep hear my voice. Uh -huh. And I know them. Uh -huh. And they follow me. That's why we're here on the day of Pentecost. Because we're following our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Make a plan. He kept the feast of Pentecost, and that's what we keep, that's why we're keeping it. Make a plan. Follow me as I follow Christ. Yes, sir. Go ahead and read. Verse 28. Uh-huh. And I give unto them eternal life. Oh, this is what he came to give his sheep. Eternal life. So, this is that life more abundantly that he came to give. Go ahead and read. And they shall never perish. Uh-huh. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Now, let's go now. Let's go to Acts, the second chapter. Acts, the second chapter. And we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Acts 2 and 1. A lot of people come here just, you know... Well, speaking in tongues, you know, <laughs> but they don't realize and don't acknowledge the reason why all these Jews, these devout men from every nation under heaven, were there. They were there keeping the day of Pentecost. They had no idea that the Spirit was going to come upon them and they were going to hear Peter and them speaking in their own languages when they were born. They were gathered for the day of Pentecost. Go ahead and read verse 1. Acts chapter 2, verse 1. Uh-huh. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, uh -huh. they were all with one accord in one place. Well, wait a minute. I thought that the day, uh, the, the feast days was done away with. How could it fully come if it was done away with? Check it out. <laughs> How could that be? And you know, I read this to my brothers all the time, and they still say the same thing. And I'm like, well, wait a minute. Jesus had died already, went to the grave, came up out of the grave, and ascended to heaven. And we're still looking at the day of Pentecost. Well, now, why would they be celebrating the day of Pentecost if it's done away with? And not only that, not, it was fully come. Plain, bro. Yes, sir. And who was there? Skip down to verse 5. Let's see who was there. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, uh -huh. devout men, out of every nation under heaven. Now, that's, what, that's who was there. Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. But why were they there from the start? 
to keep the day of Pentecost. Yes, sir. That's yes, why sir. they were there. Let's go now. We're going to look up the word Pentecost again. This time we're going to Urban's Bible Dictionary. We're going to look up the word Pentecost again. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Yep, this is Urban's Bible Dictionary, page 811. Pentecost. Says 50th. 50th. Same thing. We're looking at the 50th. Okay? The 50th day. In, in some, in some case, we're going to. 50th day. Yes, sir. Okay? In some we're going to show you the 50th year as well. Because that is called the Jubilee. And you know, me as well, the, this year is a Jubilee year. After two, three, every two, three years of Jubilee. No. After every 50 years of Jubilee. But then we can't call that because we have lost the count and the dates. So we don't know when the Jubilee year is. The only thing we can tell you right now is when the Jubilee year comes, that's the, that's the year when the Lord is coming, it's going to be a Jubilee year. Because he's going to, well, let me, I'm going a little ahead of myself. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, brother. Mm -hmm. Start that over. Amen. Pentecost, 50th day, the Old Testament and Jewish Feast of Weeks. Uh-huh. Is referred to under its Greek name three times in the New Testament, twice simply as an indication of date. Mm -hmm. So it same thing is 50th, right? Now, let's go now. Because the Lord gave you the 50th year, and he called that a jubilee year. Let's go to Leviticus the 25th chapter. Leviticus 25. Leviticus 25. And we're going to pick it up at verse uh, 1. Leviticus 25 and 1. And this is the year in which the Lord is coming back in a jubilee year. But look at what's going to happen during this. Look what they did during this time. Leviticus, the 25th chapter, started verse 1. Go ahead and read. <laughs> Leviticus chapter 25, verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses uh -huh. in Mount Sinai, saying, Speaking to the children of Israel, and say unto them, When ye come into the land which I give you, uh -huh. then shall the land keep a Sabbath unto the Lord. Six years thou shalt sow thy field, uh -huh. and six years thou shalt prune thy vineyard, uh -huh. and gather in the fruit thereof. Go ahead. But in the seventh year, shall be a Sabbath of rest unto the, unto the land. In the seventh year shall be a Sabbath of rest unto the land. The Lord even had his, his land rested. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the Sabbath. Call this, this year, this seventh year, a Sabbath year. Mm -hmm. Tell you, man, the Lord is something else, boy. He said, I want the land to rest. Everything go, don't touch it. For a whole year. You know, because so the land can regenerate itself in that seventh year. That's the record now. Go ahead and read, brother. Mm -hmm. A Sabbath for the Lord, thou shalt neither sow thy field, uh -huh. nor prune thy vineyard. Uh -huh. That which groweth of its own accord of thy harvest, thou shalt not reap. Uh -huh. Neither gather the grapes of thy vine undressed. Uh -huh. For it is a year of rest unto the land. It is a year of rest unto the land. Go ahead, verse 6. And the Sabbath of the land shall be meat for you, uh -huh. for thee, and for thy servant, and for thy maid, uh -huh. and for thy hired servant, and for thy stranger. He always includes the stranger. That sojourner with thee. That sojourner with thee. We're not talking about... Israelites that were called strangers. We're talking about people of other nations. Because remember, when the children of Israel came out of Egypt, it was a mixed multitude with them. Son. It was a mixed multitude. And that is the stranger that the Lord is referring to. Skip down to verse uh, 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 skip down to verse 8. Go ahead and read. 8. Uh -huh. And thou shalt number seven Sabbaths of, of years. Now wait a minute now. He said, and thou shalt number seven Sabbaths of years. Go ahead and read. Unto thee, uh -huh. seven times seven years. Uh -huh. Seven times seven years. How many years is that? Forty-nine, 49 years. Just like he told you the number seven Sabbaths of the weeks. 
right? And that gave you 49 days. Then he added a day. Keep reading. Seven times seven years in the space of the seven Sabbaths of years uh -huh. shall be unto thee 40 and nine years. Keep reading. Then shall thou cause the trumpet of the jubilee to sound uh -huh. on the tenth day of the seventh month. You said you should call the trumpet of jubilee to sound in the tenth day of the seventh month. What is the tenth day of the seventh month? That is the day of atonement. And then when the Lord returns, you're going to hear that set, if you're here, you're going to hear that seventh trumpet blow. Mm -hmm. And the Lord is going to free his people. Hallelujah. Keep it simple, brother. Yes, sir. Does everybody understand? Mm -hmm. And it's going to be in the Jubilee year. Yes, sir. Go ahead and read. What verse you at? <clears throat> verse 9. Uh-huh. In the day of atonement, shall, excuse me, let me go up a little bit, back then, nine. Uh -huh. Then shalt thou cause the trumpet of the jubilee to sound on the tenth day of the seventh month. Uh -huh. In the day of atonement shall ye make the trumpet sound uh -huh. throughout all your land. Go ahead. And ye shall hollow the fiftieth year. And you shall hollow what? The fiftieth year. The fiftieth year. See, the Lord going to have that trumpet blown in the sixth day, at the end of the sixth day, going into the seventh day. So if he had it blown on the uh, uh, tenth day of the uh, seventh month, how many months you got to go? You got five months to go, right? So this is the time when the Lord going to have this trumpet blown. And, and when the seventh day come, it's going to be a jubilee year. Because that's when the Lord going to free his servants. The ones that's alive and also the ones that's in the grave. Go ahead and read. Yes, sir. It says, verse 10. Uh -huh. And ye shall hollow the 50th year and proclaim liberty throughout all the land unto all the inhabitants thereof. Uh -huh. It shall be a jubilee unto you, and ye shall return every man unto his possession. Uh -huh. And ye shall return every man unto his family. Now, because the book tells, I think that's in Zechariah, every man going to flee unto his own country. He said right here, though, and ye shall hollow the 50th year and proclaim liberty throughout all the land unto all the inhabitants thereof. It shall be a jubilee unto you, and you shall return every man unto his possession, and you shall return every man unto his family. Where are we going? <laughs> I know, but we going to Africa. Yeah, we say every, because the book says every man will return to his country. So what country are we going to? Everybody got a country but us, right? Ding, 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 ding. The Israelite. Because everybody going to return to their own country. And, to, uh, 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 and so if everybody will return to their own country, then where are we going? Jerusalem. Well, we, we want to go to Jerusalem. That's where we plan on going. But you know, everybody, uh, all the other brothers talking about they going to Africa, and that's a continent, not a country. <laughs> Go over there now and talk about, because you know, you got some brothers call themselves Africans, comedic Africans, right? Egypt, they, well, we call them, oh, it's a body of land over here. I'm sitting here waiting. I've just been waiting, sitting here patiently waiting. You know, said that uh, uh, five years ago, I'm still patiently waiting. When are y'all going? You go over there and stop talking about taking over some land and see what's going to happen to you. <laughs> it's going to be a, 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 a mass murder. <laughs> That's what it's going to be. But anyway, <laughs> verse, verse 11, read that. The Jubilee shall that 50th year be unto you. Uh-huh. Ye shall not sow, neither reap that which grow of itself, uh -huh. of itself in it, Go ahead. nor gather the grapes in it uh -huh. of thy vine undressed. Go ahead and read. For it is the jubilee, it shall be holy unto you. Uh -huh. You shall eat the increase thereof out of the field. Uh -huh. In the year of this jubilee, you shall return every man into his possession. He said it again, you shall turn every man, return every man unto his possession in this jubilee year. Yes, sir. Let's go to Luke, the fourth chapter. Now look at what Jesus is going to say right here. Luke 4, and we're going to pick it up at verse 14. Luke 4 and 
14. Luke 4 and 14. Go ahead and read it. Luke chapter 4, verse 14. Uh-huh. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee. And there went out a fame of him throughout all the region round about. Uh-huh. And he taught in, in their synagogues, being glorified of all. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. Uh-huh. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. Now I don't have to elaborate on that, do I? That is plain scripture. If our master kept the Sabbath day, then what should we be doing? Keeping the Sabbath, Keeping the Sabbath day. That's so plain right there. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. Verse 17. Uh-huh. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. You see that? You see, you see what Jesus was reading? The book of Isaiah. Yes, sir. Then he went through and found this place right here. Go ahead and read. And uh -huh. when he had opened the book, uh -huh. he found the place where it was written. He found up Jesus thumbing through the book like we do. Come on. Line upon line, precept upon precept, here little and there little. But look at what he's going to say. Go ahead and read. Verse 18. Uh-huh. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Uh-huh. Because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Go ahead. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives. Stop right there. To preach deliverance to the captives. To preach deliverance to the captives. Go ahead and read. And recovering the sight to the blind. Uh-huh. To set at liberty them that are bruised. To set at liberty them that are bruised. Because that's what happened uh, 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 in the 50th year, right? The, the people were uh, set free. Liberation. And every man went to his own possession, and every man was returned to his country. Mm -hmm. They were liberated mm -hmm. in that 50th year, right? Mm -hmm. Read that verse again. Verse 18. Uh huh. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Uh huh. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted to preach deliverance to the captives uh -huh. and recovering of sight to the blind uh -huh. to set at liberty them that are bruised. Not only is he going to come and deliver his people physically, but he's going to come and deliver you spiritually. Because that grave has got men bound right now. So the Lord has come to liberate you. <clears throat> Go ahead and read. Verse 19. Uh -huh. To preach the, acceptab the acceptable year of the Lord. Uh-huh. And he closed the book. And he gave it again to the minister. Uh-huh. And sat down. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogues were fasting on him. Look, they lay tripping out. Look at what he just said. Yeah, yes, sir. He just quoted Isaiah. Yes, sir. Now they're all looking at him. What is he going to say next? Go ahead and read. And he began to say unto them. Uh-huh. This day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. This day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. This scripture that he read over in Isaiah the 61st chapter. Now let's go over to Isaiah the 61st chapter and let's read all of this. Isaiah 61 and 1. Isaiah 61 and 1. Isaiah 61 and verse 1. Because this is where Jesus quoted from. And all, often, that's, this is what happened. This is where the uh, apostles and all the people <clears throat> quoted from. They quoted from the prophets. Yes, sir. Because the apostles were still writing their books or their letters. So this is where they got the understanding from. It was from the prophets. Isaiah 61 and 1. Now, Jesus himself was reading out of the prophets, then we can read out of the prophets. Isaiah 61, and pick it up at verse 1. Go ahead and read it. Isaiah chapter 61, verse 1. Uh-huh. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, uh -huh. because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. Go ahead. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, uh -huh. to, proc to proclaim liberty to the captives, uh-huh. And the opening of the prison to them that are bound. Go ahead. To proclaim the acceptable year below. Uh -huh. And the day of vengeance of our God. See, he didn't read you this part right here. 
Because the Lord, when the Lord comes, he says the vision of the Lord our God, when he comes, he's going to have to strong arm this man and take over this planet to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God. Uh-huh. To comfort all that mourn. Uh-huh. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. Uh-huh. To give unto them beauty for ashes. The oil of joy for mourning. Go ahead. And garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Uh -huh. That they might be called trees of righteousness. That, that they might be called trees of righteousness. Who might be called trees of righteousness? Men might Same. be called trees of righteousness. Yes, sir. Go ahead and read. The planning of the Lord. Uh-huh. That he might be glorified. Now, we got we to gotta break this down now. We got to find out what is he talking about. And find out what this feast is about as well. Let's go to 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. 1 Corinthians 15. And we're going to pick it up at verse 3. 1 Corinthians 15 and 3. And when the Lord comes, he's coming to do something. He's coming to free this man. <clears throat> 1 Corinthians 15 and 3. Let's see what he came and done the first time he came. 1 Corinthians 15 and 3. Go ahead and read. Yes, sir. First, first Corinthians chapter 15, verse 3. Uh-huh. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, uh -huh. and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures, uh -huh. and that he was seen a Cephas then of twelve. After that, he was seen of above five hundred brethren. Now, now look, they see a body. Yes, sir. See, that's how we know that no one else has been born again. Because, excuse me, when you are born again, a body can go come up out of the ground. Just like you see Jesus right here. He said, he shall change our vile body and fashion like unto his glorious body. You see anybody walking around like this? So ain't nobody been born again yet. No, sir. Because he was born of Mary. Then he was called the firstborn from the dead. That's born twice, right? That's right. So you don't see nobody walking around like this. Keep it simple. Read that again, brother. Mm -hmm. Back at six. Uh-huh. After that, he was seen of above 500 brethren uh -huh. at once, of whom the greater part remain unto this present. Uh-huh. But some are fallen asleep. Now Jesus came up out the grave and he was seen of men, over 500 people. And that's what's going to happen when you come up out, when we come up out of the grave. You're going to be, yeah. a body is going to be seen. You're going to have a body. Yes, sir. Now don't ask me what kind of body that is. The only thing I know the book calls it spiritual. But like Paul said, it may chance a wheat or some other grain. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read some more. Verse 7. Uh huh. After that, he was seen of James, then of all the apostles. Uh huh. And now look, now look. Look what Paul is going to say right here. Go ahead and read. And last of all, he was seen of me. Uh huh. Also, as of one born out of due time. As of one born out of due time. He didn't look like no ordinary man right here. He looked like one that was born out of due time. This is when Jesus had his spiritual body. You know, one born out of due time, like you go and plant uh, a watermelon and they come up in the wintertime, and it's just not going to look like no regular watermelon. Does everybody understand? So now Jesus, when he came up out of the grave, he didn't look like a regular man. But a body was Seen. And so, like I said, he shall change our vile body and fashion it like unto his glorious body. Let's go now. Let's go to uh, um, um, John, the 20th chapter. John, the 20th chapter. <clears throat> John, 20. And that's what this feast is all about. It is about the first fruits or the first resurrection. That's what this lesson is all about. And there's Feast of Pentecost is all about the first fruits. And that's what we want to become, the first fruits. But I'll take the, I'll take the uh, second. Yes, I'll take that. Because you ain't going to know now. If you lay down and die, you ain't going to know if you're just like asleep in the night. 
Although I don't want to die, don't get me wrong. <laughs> but it'd be just like a sleep in the night. You wake up, you see stuff, people flying around and stuff. You, what happened? <laughs> John 20, John 20 and 1. John 20 and 1. Go ahead and read. Now look at what day that the people saw Jesus after his resurrection. Now this is right after his resurrection. Go ahead and read. John chapter 20 verse 1. Uh-huh. The first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early, uh -huh. when it was yet dark, unto the sepulcher, uh -huh. and see if the stone taken away from the sepulcher. When was that sheep to be weighed? The morrow after the Sabbath. What is the morrow after the Sabbath? It is the first day of the week. Now here Jesus is, and he sees Mary when? On the first day of the week. That don't mean Jesus rose on the first day of the week. Don't. We're not saying that. Okay? She caught up with him on the first day of the week. Go ahead and read. Verse 2. Uh-huh. Then she runneth and cometh to Simon Peter uh -huh. and to the other disciples whom Jesus loved and saith unto them, uh -huh. They have taken away the Lord out of the sepulcher, uh -huh. and we know not where they have laid him. Go ahead. Peter therefore went forth in that other disciple and came to the sepulcher. So they ran both together, and... The other disciples did outrun Peter and came first to the sepulchre. Skip to verse, uh, skip to verse eleven. Skip to verse eleven. Go ahead. But Mary stood without at the sepulchre weeping, and as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the sepulchre. Now, what day is this? This is still the first day of the week, right? Mm -hmm. Now he gonna tell Mary something. Go ahead, keep reading. Verse twelve. Uh huh. And see if two angels in white city, uh -huh. the one at the head and the other at the feet, Go ahead. where the body of Jesus had laid, had uh -huh. laid. and they say unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? She said unto them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I know not where they have laid him. Uh -huh. Have laid him. And when she had thus said, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing. Now, she didn't know who Jesus was, so but she saw him standing there. Go ahead and read. And knew not that it was Jesus. Uh-huh. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Uh-huh. Who seeketh thou? She, supposing him to be the gardener, uh -huh. saith unto him, Sir, if thou have borne him hence, tell me where thou hast laid him. And I will take him away. Now she don't even know that she's talking to Jesus. She, she know, she like, tell me where you laid him and everything. I, I'm, I'm the one. <laughs> you talking to me? <laughs> but she's not going to understand that until he calls her name. Go ahead and read. Jesus said to her, Mary. Mary. So he calls her name now, Mary. And now she recognizes his voice and she knows who he is now. Go ahead and read. She turned herself and said to him, uh -huh. Rabboni. Rabboni, uh-huh. Which is to say master. Which is to say master. So she turned around. Uh, she tell me where you're laying, man. She's like, he's like, Mary? He's like, she's like, Rabboni? Which is being interpreted master. So she said, master? Is that you? <laughs> Go ahead and read. 17. Uh-huh. Jesus said unto her, Touch me not. Touch me not. Why? For well, I am not yet ascended unto my father. Uh-huh. But go to my brethren. Go ahead. And say unto them, I ascend unto my father. Uh -huh. And your father unto my God and your God. Now, wait a minute. If, if it's a one being with three manifestations, you got Jesus on the ground, who is he ascending to then? But you see what he said, touch me not, but I have not yet ascended to my father. Just like they could not touch the harvest until the sheep was waiting for the Lord to be accepted. So now Jesus has to go before the Lord to be accepted. Yes, sir. So he said, don't touch me yet. This is the first fruits we're looking at. Does everybody understand? Come on. And you don't touch the first fruits until, that's, until the sheep is way before the Lord. So he said, don't touch me yet. I have to ascend to my God 
and to your God, my father and your father. Now, let's go now. Let's go to uh let's go to Luke, the 24th chapter, Luke 24. Back up to Luke 24. Now look at what he's gonna tell them. Luke 24, and we're gonna pick it up at verse 33. Luke 24 and 33. Now look at what he's going to tell them now. Luke 24 and 33. Everybody got it? Amen. A little chilly in here today. It's all good. Bro. Go ahead and read. Just, uh, Luke chapter 24, verse 23. And when they found not no, his no. body. No, no. Luke 24, verse 33. 33. Oh, yes. I'm sorry, yo. That's all right. All right. <laughs> Luke 24, chapter 24, verse 33. Yes. And they arose up the same hour and returned to Jerusalem and found the eleven gathered together uh -huh. and them that were with them. Go ahead. Say. You know, he said the eleven gathered together because, you know, Judas is scary and he had betrayed Jesus. So now they got eleven of them because they had a pick Matthias yet. So it's 11 of, 11 of the disciples there. Go ahead and read. Saying, the Lord is risen indeed and have appeared to Simon. Uh-huh. So now they're like, you know, the Lord has risen. And he has appeared unto Simon. Go ahead and read. And they told what things were done in the way. Uh-huh. And how he was known of them in breaking of the bread. Go ahead. And as they thus spake, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them. Now he just popped up in the middle of them. They weren't doing this before. <laughs> they sitting in a room, gathered together, and Jesus pop up in the midst of them. I know they had to be scared to death. <laughs> Go ahead and read. Yes, sir. In the midst of them, and say unto them, Peace be unto you. Peace be unto you. Shalom. Yes, sir. Go ahead and read. But they were terrified and frightened. Uh huh. And supposed that they have seen a spirit. And so they, they suppose they seen an angel, right? But what did Jesus say? And he said unto them, uh -huh. Why are ye troubled? Go ahead. And why do you do you, thoughts arise in your hearts? Uh -huh. Behold my hands and my feet. Behold my hands and my feet. What day was this on though? We're still on the first day of the week. He said, Behold my hands and my feet. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. That it is I myself. Uh-huh. Hand, handle me. Stop right see. there. He said, you see what he said? Handle me. Because he told Mary first, he said, touch me not, for I have not yet ascended to my father and your father. Now he said, handle me. Now you can touch me because he had been accepted of the father. Yes, sir. Does everybody understand? Amen. Read that verse 39 again. Behold my hands and my feet. Uh-huh. That it is I myself. Go ahead. Handle me and see. Uh-huh. For a spirit hath not flesh and bones, as ye see me a have. A spirit has not flesh and bones, as you see me have. He didn't say nothing about blood. So this body that you're going to have uh, is obviously flesh and bones, but it's not going to have any blood in it. And you can see flesh and bone, bones, right? None of that cast for the friendly ghost type stuff. You understand? Know <laughs> this is flesh and bones. <laughs> but the Bible calls it a spiritual body. But you see what he said? Touch, handle me. First he told Mary, don't touch me because I have not yet ascended to, to the Father. So they had to go and be accepted first. Just like yet that sheep had to be weighed before, the, the, before God to be accepted. So now they can go and harvest the wheat uh, uh, crop. Now, let's go now. Let's go to... Um, Let's go to Colossians, the first chapter. Colossians, the first chapter. Now look at what Jesus became when he uh, went to be accepted of the Father. Colossians, the first chapter. Colossians 1, and we're going to pick it up at verse 14. Colossians 1 and ver verse 14. <clears throat> when you get it, brother, go ahead and read this, uh, Colossians chapter 1, verse 14. Uh-huh. In whom we have redemption through his blood, uh -huh. 
even the forgiveness of sins. Go ahead. Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. Stop right there. You see that? He is the firstborn of every creature. There's no, if he's the firstborn of every creature, then what happened to uh, uh, the rest of the prophets? What happened to them? They are asleep in the grave. And we can go over, I think that's Revelation 20th chapter tells you uh, that uh, then he shall give, after that seventh trumpet is blown, then he shall give reward unto his servants, the prophets. So all the prophets are asleep right now, and he is the firstborn of this creature, of every creature. First of his kind. Go ahead and read. Verse 16. Uh-huh. For by him were all things created uh -huh. that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, uh -huh. whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. Now, so he said, for by him were all things created. But you see, he is the firstborn of every creature. Firstborn. Let's go to 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. 1 Corinthians 15. We ain't got long to go. 1 Corinthians 15, and we're going to pick it up at verse 20. 1 Corinthians 15 and 20. When you get it, brother, go ahead and read it. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 20. Uh-huh. But now is Christ risen from the dead uh -huh. and become the first fruits of them that slept. You see that? Jesus become the first fruits of them which slept. The first fruits. Go ahead and read. For since by man came death, uh -huh. by man came also the resurrection of the dead. Uh huh. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Go ahead. But every man in his own order. Uh huh. Christ the first fruits. Uh huh. After, afterwards. They that are Christ at his coming. Ooh. He just said a mouthful right there. So that tells me right there that ain't nobody uh, come up from the grave yet. Nobody has gone to heaven yet. Read that verse one more time. What verse are you? 23. Uh-huh. But every man in his own order. Uh-huh. Christ the first fruit. Christ the first fruit. Go ahead and read. Afterward, they that are Christ at his coming. Oh. So we're going to become a kind of first fruits too. Let's go look at it. Let's go to James, the first chapter. Because this is what you want to become. One, a, a part of the first fruits. Yes, sir. A part of that first harvest. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. First, I'm sorry, James 1 and 18. James 1 and 18. So just like Christ was uh, the first fruits, we shall be a part of the first fruits. And this first fruits is represent what? The first resurrection. That's what this is about. The first resurrection. John 1 and 18. John 1 and 18. Go ahead and read it. James 1. I'm sorry. James 1 and 18. Go ahead and read it. Because didn't the Lord tell you when we read over in Exodus 34 chapter, the firstborn is mine? You will be that first fruit. He said that is mine. Yes, and see, when you come about that grave and you become that part of that first fruits, man, he said, and I saw thrones and they that sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. That's, a, that's the ones that come up in that first harvest, in the first resurrection. Yes, sir. Because they are going to be the Lord. I'm going to say, we are going to be Make that plane, brother. Make that plane. Well, I'm playing on the first. Yes, sir. Well, I'll take the second one. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. James 1 and 18. James 1 and 18. Go ahead and read it. James chapter 1, verse 18. Uh-huh. Of his own will begot he us uh -huh. with the word of truth. Go ahead. That we should be a kind of first fruits uh -huh. of his creatures. Just like Jesus. He's going to change our vile body and fashion like unto his glorious body. And of his own will begot he us with the word of truth. That we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Just like Jesus. Hallelujah. And this is representing 
The first resurrection. See, Jesus is the only one that's been born again. The first one of his kind. Oh, I hope I become like him. Let's go to Romans the 8th chapter. Romans the 8th chapter. Because all the thing we got now is a hope. Because you can have a spiritual miscarriage at any time. That's why you got to stay in this, man. You got to be diligent in this. Yeah. Romans the 8th chapter, Romans 8 and 16. Romans 8 and 16. <clears throat> when you get it, brother, go ahead and read it. Romans chapter 8, verse 16. Uh-huh. The Spirit itself bear witness with our spirit uh -huh. that we are the children of God. Uh-huh. And if children, then heirs. If children, then heirs. Heirs means you're going to inherit something, right? Yes, sir. So it said, if children did heirs, uh-huh. Heirs of God. Go ahead. And joint heirs with Christ. Stop right there. You see that? You're going to be joint. You know anybody that's been a joint heir right now with Christ? No, sir. Because mm -hmm. the Lord said, I'm going to raise you up when? At the last day. And then that's when you become joint heirs with Christ. Go ahead and read. If so. Uh-huh. If so be that we suffer with him. Uh-huh. That we may be also glorified together. So you're going to suffer in this life. And you're going to suffer in this body. Yes, no. Mm -hmm. You yes, understand? Yes, sir. This, you see, you're going to be uh, under the bondage of death right now. because, uh, But the Lord one day is going to liberate you from this body of death. Praise sir. God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go ahead and read. Verse 18. Uh-huh. For I reckon that the suffering of this present time uh -huh. are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Do you know what you got coming? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Do you realize what you got coming yes, if you uh, continue in this? Yeah. Yeah. Eternal life, man. Yes, you're going to live forever. Just like Jesus lived forever, you're going to live just like him. Yes, that is really something. Just change me, though, because I don't want to die. Amen. <laughs> Go ahead and read. Verse 19. For the earnest expectation of the creature, uh -huh. waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. Uh-huh, because see, you're not a son of God in the sense that you're a son of God like Jesus. He is truly a son of God. Because he had made the change already. Forever will he be the son of God. Read that verse, start that verse again. 19. Uh-huh. And forever will you, when you make your change, you will be a son of God and daughters too. Make the plain, brother. Make verse 19. Go ahead and read. For the earnest expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. Right now we waiting. Go ahead and read. For the creature was made subject to vanity. Uh-huh. Not willingly, but by reason of him who hath Subjected the same in hope. See, this creature was made subject unto vanity. This whole world that we're living in is vanity. Yes, sir. It's, it's not going to even compare to the world that is to come. Say it again, bro. So you just, we're just living in vanity right now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because like I said, it's not going to even compare to the world to come, man. Go ahead and read. Verse 21. Uh-huh. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage uh -huh. of corruption. Well, wait a minute. It's going to be, but because the creature itself shall also be delivered from the bondage of corruption. What is this bondage of corruption? It is this body. Flesh. You're going to be delivered from this body one day, this bondage of corruption. When you start, when you first born, that's when you, this body starts corrupting. Right, right. <laughs> And then when you go to the grave, then it really just corrupt. So no. Right? Yeah. Go ahead and read. Yeah. It says, because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into uh -huh. the glorious liberty of the children of God. Amen. Yes, sir. <laughs> he said, look, because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. You're going to be liberated. Yes, yes sir. Yes, sir. Just like Jesus came to liberate, we read over Luke the fourth chapter. He gonna come to deliver and to uh, uh, give liberty to the captives. Right now, you're a captive in this body. You're a captive in this world. In Israel, you showing up a captive in this country. Yes. <laughs> but he's coming to, del to to deliver you or to liberate you. Go ahead and read. Verse 22. 22. 
Uh-huh. But we know that the whole creation grown uh -huh. and travailed in pain together until now. See, everybody groaning right now. Everybody wants salvation, but nobody want to do what it takes to get it. You know, they, oh yeah, the Lord's going to save me in spite of myself. No, he's not. <laughs> Run around telling people that they're born again already. We see that, that could be true. Because Jesus only was born again. So he said, for we know that the whole creation is groaning. But they groan it, but they don't want to do what's necessary uh, so they have to groan no more. <laughs> and travail in pain together until now. Uh-huh. And not only they, uh -huh. but ourselves also. We, but we grow it because we know we wait on. And we know how hard the Lord gave us for this bondage that we in. Not only in this body, but being an Israelite in this country. We've been growing. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead and read. Yes, sir. It says, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit. Uh-huh. See, we, we, see, that's the thing, though. We have the first fruits of the Spirit. Hallelujah. We understand the Word of God. Hallelujah. We had the first fruits of the Spirit. Finish that. Even we ourselves grown within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to uh -huh. wit, the redemption of our body. Oh, we waiting for that adoption to wit, the redemption of our body? Yes, sir. Because remember, that first fruit, the first male had to be redeemed. And so the first fruits has got to be redeemed. And right now, we waiting on the redemption of our bodies. Boy, oh, this is really something. Are y'all catching this? What is being laid that what is being laid down? Are y'all catching this? We waiting for the redemption of our bodies. Let's go now. Let's go to uh, uh, 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. 1 Corinthians 15. This is really something, man. This day of Pentecost, it means something. The, the, uh, the feast of the Lord means something. It's pointing to the uh, uh, God's plan for the salvation of men. That's what this feast and all the feasts are pointing to. That's why I look at people and, oh, yeah, the Lord done away with the feast day. Do you understand what the feast days mean? Well, no, I ain't never going to say, well, how are you going to tell me then it's done away with when you don't even know what it means? Sit down and listen, and maybe you would have a change of heart and say, well, man, that makes sense. The word of God makes sense now. I see why you guys are keeping the feast. You Israelites. <laughs> Spiritual and physical. Yes, sir. 1 Corinthians 15 and 35. 1 Corinthians 15 and 35. See, that's the problem. Especially with Israel, they don't want to sit down and listen. They just go off of what somebody that told them. Or some traditions. Sit down and listen to a lesson. That's what I had to tell my comedic brothers. Hey, man, have you ever heard a, a lesson uh, dealing with black history? Well, no. About two, three of them. One, two of them in New York. Have you ever listened to a lesson? Well, no, I ain't listen. But all of them say the same thing. I said, well, man, look, I'm going to see your lesson on black history. Why don't you listen to it? Before you go on off talking about the children of Israel didn't exist, we're not the children of Israel, why don't you listen to the lesson first? Right. Then give me an answer. How you going to give an answer to something that you haven't heard the question for, uh, of, of already? Hello. 1 Corinthians 15 and 35. 1 Corinthians 15 and 35. Go ahead and read. Yes, sir. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 35. Uh-huh. But some man will say, how are the dead raised up? Uh-huh. And with what body do they come? Now, that's a legitimate question right there. He said, uh, 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 how are the dead raised up and with what body do they come? Go ahead and read. Thou fool. Uh-huh. So of so as is not quickened except it die. Read that again. Thou fool. Uh -huh. that which thou yeah. Thank you. <laughs> thou fool, that which thou sow is not quickened except it die. It is not quickened except it is not made alive except it die. That's what quicken means. Go ahead and read. And that which thou sow, thou sow not that body that shall be. Uh-huh. But bear grain. But bear grain. See, this is not the body that is that, that is now, but this body going to bear grain. Go ahead and read. It made chance of wheat. Now, why did he say chance of wheat? Because this is what we're looking at. 
the wheat harvest. Mm -hmm. It may chance a wheat or some other grain. Go ahead and read. Or some other grain. Uh huh. But God, this, this is the body that you're going to get. Go ahead and read. Yes, sir. Uh huh. But God gave it a body uh -huh. that didn't have pleased him. That's the body you're going to get. The body that pleases him. Uh huh. And to every seed his own body. And to every seed his own body. Skip to verse 42. Skip to verse 42. Go ahead and read. So also is the resurrection of the dead. Uh huh. It is sown in corruption. It is sown in. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption. Uh -huh. It is raised in incorruption. It is raised in incorruption because this body right here is going to be sown in corruption. When it's going to the grave, it's going to corrupt. But when it's raised up, it's going to come up in incorruptible body. Yes, sir. Just like Jesus' body. Yes, sir. But it's going to be a body that can be seen. Go ahead and read. It is raised in incorruption. Uh -huh. It is sown in dishonor. Uh -huh. It is raised in glory. Go ahead. It is sown in weakness. Uh -huh. It is raised in power. Read, my brother. It is sown a natural body. It is sown a natural body. That is us. Mm -hmm. We are so we are a natural body. And when he goes into the grave, he goes in the grave. A natural body, uh huh. It is raised a spiritual body. It is raised a spiritual body. Just like Jesus had a spiritual body. Does everybody understand? Amen. But why is Paul talking about it may chance of wheat or some other grain? Let's go to Matthew, the 13th chapter. Matthew 13. We ain't got long to go. Matthew 13. And we're going to pick it up in verse 24. Matthew 13 and 24. Matthew 13 and 24. See, the, 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 the apostles and the prophets line up. They are all saying the same thing. And we should be repeating this. Matthew 13 and 24. Go ahead and read it. Matthew chapter 13, verse 24. Uh-huh. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, uh -huh. The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. Uh-huh. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat uh -huh. and went his way. Uh -huh. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit. I tell you what, read that verse 25 again. Y'all read so good now, man. <laughs> read verse 25 again. Uh-huh. Yes, sir. It says, uh, but while men slept, uh -huh. his enemy came and sowed tares. His enemy came and sowed tares. Now look at this now, because these tabs must not be so good, because he said the enemy came and sold these tabs. Among who? Among the wheat. Among the wheat. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. And went his way. Uh-huh. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, uh-huh. Then appeared the tares also. Now we're looking at this wheat, which is the fruit. And he said, uh, uh and the, then there appeared the tares also. Go ahead and read. So the servants of the householder came and said to him, uh -huh. Sir, didn't not thou so good seed in thy field? Uh -huh. From whence then had it tares? Go ahead. So you see, so the tares uh, 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 are not good. The wheat is good. The tares are not good. Go ahead and read. He said unto them, uh -huh. And any of have done this, the servant said unto him, Without them that we go and gather them up. Uh-huh. But he said, nay. He said, no, don't go and gather them up. Why? That's why you gather up the tares. That's why you gather up the tares, uh-huh. You root up also the wheat. You root them. also up the wheat. The wheat is good. Yes, sir. See, the wheat is good. The tares are not good. Go ahead and read. Let both grow together the, until um, the harvest. See, let both go together until the harvest. Go ahead and read. And in the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, uh -huh. gather ye together, uh -huh. burst the tares, and bind them in bundles to uh -huh. burn them. To do what? To burn. See, the, the tares are bad, so he said, I'm going to bind them up first, and I'm going to burn them. Go ahead and read. But gather the wheat into my barn. But gather the wheat into the barn. Hallelujah. Does anybody, well, if you don't understand, then let's skip down to verse 36, because he's going to reveal this uh, parable to you. 
Verse 36, go ahead and read. Then Jesus sent the multitude away uh -huh. and went into the house. And his disciples came unto him, saying, uh -huh. Declare to us the parable of the tares of the field. Uh huh, because we're not talking about actual tares and actual wheat. We're talking about people right here. Go ahead and read. Yeah. So they, they actually tell us the parable of the tares, Lord. Go ahead and read. He answered and said unto them, Uh huh. He that soweth good seed is the son of man. He that soweth the good seed, the wheat, is the son of man. Uh huh. The field is the world. Uh huh. The good seed are the children of the kingdom. That is the wheat right there. The field of the, is, is the world. The, the good seed are the children of the kingdom. Uh huh. But the tares are the children of the wicked one. But the chi the tares are the children of the wicked. Who the children? Who is the wicked one? Satan yes, sir. is the wicked one. Satan got children. Yes, sir. Anybody understand that? Mm -hmm. Satan got children. If you ain't on the Lord's side, then whose side? If you ain't a, a child of God, then whose child are you? Satan's. Go ahead and read. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. Uh huh. The harvest is the end of the world. Uh huh. And the reapers are the angels. And the reapers are the angels. Uh oh. <laughs> you do not want to get caught by the reapers. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Go ahead and read. As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, uh -huh. so shall it be in the end of this world. Go ahead. And the Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, uh -huh. and them which do iniquity. Okay, so that's the, those those are tears right there, the ones that do iniquity, the ones that sin. Go ahead, read. Go ahead. And shall cast them into a furnace of fire. Uh huh. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. We'll have to tell you what that is, do we? Come on. Verse forty-three. Go ahead. Then shall the righteous shine forth as a sun in the kingdom of their father. Uh huh. Who have ears to hear, let them hear. Do you have ears to hear? Because we are dealing with the wheat right now. He said, then shall the righteous shine forth. That is the wheat. Uh, uh, as a son in the kingdom of their father, who have ears to hear, let them hear. Can you hear this today? Yes, sir. Because the wheat are the righteous, and the tares are the wicked. And the wicked shall go into the fire, and the wheat are going into the kingdom. Go ahead and read. Again. Uh-huh. The kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure hid in a field. Uh-huh. The which, when a man hath found, he hideth, uh -huh. and for joy thereof go up and sell of all that he hath, uh -huh. and buy of that field. Go ahead. Again. The kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man. Seeking goodly pearls, who, when he had found one pearl of great price, uh -huh. went and sold all that he had and bought it. Now, so now let's go now. Let's go to uh, let's go to uh, and that's how precious this word is. Come on. So man. when you find this word, it's like a pearl. You hold on to that pearl, right? Come on. These women, y'all, y'all know how to find in with those pearls, brother. <laughs> we better get hip to the pearls. Because when you find this world, this, this word is just like a pearl, man. You want to hold on to it. Yeah. Let's go now. Let's go to, because we got uh, three more after this one. Revelations 20 and 1. Revelations 20 and 1. And that's what the Lord was telling you about this parable right here. He was telling you about the one that's going into the lake of fire. And he was telling about the one that's going into the kingdom. Revelations 20 and 1. Revelations 20 and and one. Go ahead and read it. Revelation chapter 20, verse 1. Uh-huh. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, uh -huh. having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, uh -huh. that old shrew, which is the devil, and Satan, uh -huh. and bound him in a thousand years. Go ahead and read. And cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up. See, Satan ain't bad. He ain't bad like that. Right. You understand? Know the Lord just had an angel. Go get him. This is time now. Go get him. Shut him up for a thousand years. He probably down there. Let me out of here. Your thousand years ain't up yet, buddy. <laughs> Go ahead and read. And shut him up and set a seal upon him. Uh huh. That he should deceive the nations no more. Go ahead. Until the thousand years should be fulfilled. 
And after that, he must be loosed a little season. After that, he must be loosed a little season. See, his time started first. His thousand years started first. Go ahead and read. And I saw thrones, and they that set up upon them. Uh -huh. And Jesus was given it to them. He go to wheat right here. Y'all notice that? He said, and I saw thrones with an S, and they that sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. He go to wheat right here. This is the first harvest or the first fruits of the harvest right here. Go ahead and read. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded uh -huh. for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, uh -huh. and which had not worshipped the beast. Neither his image, Go ahead. neither had received his mark upon their forehead uh -huh. or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. They lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. This is the first fruits of the, of the, of the harvest right here. The first fruits. Go ahead and read. But the rest the of the wheat. Yes, sir. Go ahead and read. Verse 5. Uh -huh. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. Uh -huh. This is the first. Resurrection. So, Resurrection. So, so now, so, so now it's going to be people that are still in the grave for a thousand years. They're not a part of the first fruits. They're not the wheat. Does everybody understand? Yeah. Verse six. What does it say? Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. Uh huh. On such the second death hath no power. See, the second death will have no power once it come on, come up in the first resurrection. They are sealed, man. Go ahead and read. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. I hope I am one of them, just, but just change me, Lord. Amen. Let's go now. Let's go to Acts the 20th chapter. We got two more. Acts 20, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Acts 20 and 1. Now you tell me why Paul is still keeping the feet and not only keeping the feet, but he's keeping them in order, just like the Lord commanded. He's keeping them in order. Acts 20 and 1. Go ahead and read it. Acts chapter 20, verse 1. Uh-huh. And after the uproar was ceased, Paul called unto him the disciples and embraced them uh -huh. and departed for to go into Macedonia. Go ahead. Uh, skip so, now, skip, uh, uh, skip to verse 5. Go ahead. These going before tarried for us at Troy. Uh -huh. And we sailed away from Philippi after the days of unleavened bread. Oh, they keep the days of unleavened bread. We'll come back to the days of unleavened bread. The Feast of Pentecost. Keep reading. And came unto them to try us in five days, uh -huh. where we abode seven days. And upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached to them, uh -huh. <laughs> ready to depart on the morrow and continue his speech until midnight. That means that the Sabbath day was changed from the seventh day to the first day of the week because Paul broke bread. <laughs> and my question to, to you then, who is Paul? <laughs> That he could change the Sabbath. Skip to verse 16. So they kept the feast of unleavened bread first. Skip to verse uh, 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 16. Go ahead and read it. But Paul had to determine had determined to sail by emphasis uh -huh. because he would not spend the time in Asia, uh -huh. for he hasted, if it were possible for him, to be at Jerusalem the day of Pentecost. For well, he hasted. And it were possible for him to be at Jerusalem, what? The day of Pentecost. This is after Jesus died and rose from the grave. And the Pentecost is about what? The first resurrection, the, being the first fruits of the harvest. And coming up in the first resurrection. Let's go to Exodus 23. We got one more. Exodus 23, and we're going to pick it up at verse 14. Exodus 23. And 14. And that's what you want to be. You want to be the first fruits of that harvest and come up in the first resurrection. Exodus 23 and 14. When you get it, go ahead and read it. Exodus chapter 23, verse 14. Uh huh. Three times thou shalt keep a feast unto me in the year. Uh huh. Thou shalt keep the feast of unleavened bread. Uh huh. Thou shalt eat unleavened bread seven days, as I commanded thee. In the time appointed of the month, a bill. Uh -huh. For in it thou camest out from Egypt, and none shall appear before me empty. And none shall appear before me empty. But you see what came first? 
It is a feast of unleavened bread. And when you come to the, to the feast, you are supposed to bring something. And so if you don't bring nothing, you're supposed to bring money. Go ahead and read. Verse 16. Uh-huh. In the feast of harvest. And the feast of what? Harvest. That is the feast of uh, wheat or feast of Pentecost. The feast of harvest. What is, read that again. In the feast of harvest. Uh-huh. The first fruits of thy labors. The first fruits of thy labors. The first fruits. He said, in the feast of harvest, the first fruits of thy labors. Uh-huh. The first fruits of thy labors, which thou hast sown in the field, uh -huh. and the feast of ingathering, which is in the end of the year. That is the feast of tabernacles, the feast of ingathering. Uh huh. When thou hast gathered in thy labors out of the field, uh huh. Three times in the year, all thy males shall appear before the Lord God. Now, let's go now, because you know you're probably gonna see something to drink around here, a little wine. We ain't drinking old strong drink. You understand, like I say, every year, or every feast, if you get caught drinking some strong drink, you're on your own. On your own. Yes, sir. And if you drink too much wine and you get drunk, <laughs> you're on your own. Make that plan. We might have somebody to help take you home if you get like that, but we ain't planning on nobody getting like that. But you know, some brothers, you know, go out and do their thing and come back and you understand. And we know about it. So, and if you decide, well, no, I'm not giving up my keys, then you on your own. So don't call Brother Rodney or Brother Caleb. Hey, man, I'm in jail. You better be calling your wife or you or somebody you know going to get you out. <laughs> I might be laughing, but I'm not joking. But anyway, Deuteronomy 14 and 23. Deuteronomy 14 and 23. Yes, Go ahead, read. Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 23. Uh-huh. And thou shalt eat before the Lord thy God uh -huh. in the place which he shall choose to place his name there. Go ahead. The tide of thy corn, of thine wine, uh -huh. of thine oil, and of the firstling of the herbs of thy flock. Uh -huh. And, excuse me, flocks that thou may have learned to fear the Lord thy God always. See, you gotta fear this God, the God of Israel, always. Go ahead and read. And if the way be too long for thee, uh -huh. so that thou art not able to carry it, or if the place be too far from thee, uh -huh. which the Lord thy God shall choose to set his name there, uh -huh. when the Lord thy God hath blessed thee. Uh -huh. Now you see that? He said, and if the, the way be too long for thee, so that thou art not able to carry it, or if the place be uh, uh, too far for thee, which the Lord thy God hath chose or choose so the lord god choose to place his name there that's where you're supposed to keep the feast i don't care what country you in and the lord god chooses to place his name here Hallelujah. and that's why we keep the feast here so much for them brothers some of world we can't keep the feast because we're, the, we're not in our land uh -uh. <laughs> where the lord chooses to put his name and that's where you're supposed to keep the feast yes sir go ahead read 25 uh-huh then shalt thou turn it into money. Uh, I said, when the Lord God hath blessed thee, because he's going to bless you, because he wants you to bring to the feast. So therefore, he's going to bless you. He said, uh, then shalt thou turn it to money. Uh -huh. And bind up the money in that hand. Uh -huh. And shall go into the place which the Lord thy God shall choose. Go ahead. And thou shalt bestow that money for whatsoever thy soul lusteth after. Uh -huh. For oxen. Uh -huh. Or for sheep. But do you see those uh, clean animals right there? Mm -hmm. So don't come up in here with no pig. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and thou shalt bestow the money for whatsoever thy soul lusteth after, for oxen, or for sheep, uh huh. Or for wine, uh huh. Or for strong drink. Or for wine, or for strong drink. It, 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 strong drink is whiskey. We did that lesson a couple of weeks ago. That is talking about whiskey. You understand? So, vodka. Let me be quiet. Finish that. <laughs> or. 
For whatsoever thy soul desireth. And for whatsoever thy soul desireth, uh -huh. and thou shalt eat there before the Lord thy God. Uh -huh. And thou shalt rejoice, thou and thine household. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to rejoice before the Lord our God. We are the children of Israel, spiritual and physical, and we are family, and that's what we get ready to do. Hallelujah. So rejoice before the Lord our God. Thank you. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we're going to have first the reading of the announcements. Then we're going to take about a 15-minute intermission. We're going to get set up, and then we're going to bless the food, and we're going to feast before the Lord. All right, Brother King. Yeah. All right, grace and peace to our brothers and sisters here at the Israel's Church of the Living God. If this is your first visit, we hope you come back and worship with us again next Sabbath. There's no eating or drinking in the sanctuary with the exception for water. Brothers and sisters, please adhere to the dress code of Israel's Church of the Living God. Brothers, please remove any head covering upon entering your building. Do not wear sleeve this shirt, fleece jogging pants, shorts, tight fitting pants, or any other revealing attire. Sisters, you must have a head covering. This is required. Head scarf, etc. Do not wear pants, shorts, skirts, midriffs, or see-through blouses, mini dresses, mini skirts, halted tops of any kind, revealing splits, tight fitting, or cleavage revealing attire modest apparel only. We have Bibles and scarves available. If you use a Bible scarf that belongs to Israel's Church of the Living God, please return it prior to leaving. If you live in the Lake County, Illinois area, please watch the television program, The Word for Life, that's every Wednesday at 6.30 p.m., Comcast Channel 17. You can visit our Facebook page, Israel's Church of the Living God, and post questions or comments. All questions will be answered according to the Bible. Click the Facebook like button to see our daily posts in the news feed. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel at ICO TLG567. In an effort to expand the church ministry, we have started the building fund. You can make your secure payments online using our PayPal account at israelschurch.org. Or you can send your donation to the attention of ICO TLG at PO Box 8933, Waukee, Illinois 60079. We thank you for your past contributions and hope for your continued support. Free will donations are welcome and appreciated. Finally, brothers and sisters, please, please continue to pray for one another. This is this uh, high day Sabbath announcement. All right. If you'd like to contact us here at Israel's Church of Living God, you can just call 847-636-4792 or 847-246-4421. Uh, we also would like for you to join us on our website. That's israelschurch.org where you can go and follow us on Facebook and look at some of our previously recorded videos on YouTube. For those that are viewing our YouTube channel, we would like for you to like and subscribe to our channel. If you would like to be baptized or are in need of spiritual counseling, you can see myself or Brother Caleb, or you can give us a call at one of those numbers, 847-636-4792 or 847246. 4421. We here at Israel's Church of Living God today are celebrating the Feast of Pentecost.